but I described the whole thing to them uh, and I got a phone call the following morning and if he ever watches this he knows who he is from an intel officer that I'd worked with for a long time and he said to me Christopher I'm just looking at the day the first this is he used the word first the first daylight photographs of the incident he said it's exactly what you described to us Yeah, I mean, the first UFO was August. Actually, it was August fifth, August the thirty first. I think today. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Okay. Yeah, today. That's probably not. It's nineteen seventy. Nineteen seventy one. It was not. I got the newspaper okay. cuttings. I'll send you them. Nineteen. I might have sent them already. Nineteen seventy. Yeah, that's, that, that's probably not a coincidence yeah. that we're talking yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. I came home from work, and as I'm going into my I lived on a trailer park, so I'm going into my home and I look up and I see this boat, little boat shaped light flashing and moving around in the sky. And I thought, wow, what is that? And I stood there and stood there and stood there. And I'd always said to myself, if you ever see one of these things, make sure you're not the only one. So we were like on a village green. There's a, a whole community. And I went and knocked on every door and got about 60 odd people out into the village green and we watched this thing for two to two and a half hours i can't remember exactly now but a, a long time i think it says in the newspaper two and a half hours and we watched this thing and, psh, and suddenly it's gone flash a light and it's gone and then i saw another one in the october and i was put in an antenna system up on the roof of a building with another rigger and looked across and i saw this pea size i mean if you imagine a pea a foot in front of your face it's just a small circle but it's glinting mm -hmm. and it shot across the sky and stopped dead and it, it's sort of reflective and it just stops dead and then it comes back a bit and comes back a bit and when then you say pea size like is it like an orb <laughs> it's like an orb it's, it's circular yeah okay it's the it's like a, a, spherical. a gleam. yeah spherical yeah spherical but of course a saucer is spherical if it's face onto you <laughs> it's only a saucer yeah. if it's edge onto yeah. you so i mean a lot of people have said that to me i said well i don't know so i got i can only say what i saw and it looked like yeah. a little key but it was clearly visible and stopped and then came back a bit and stopped and came back a bit and stopped and I mean, fast, by, from horizon to horizon in the three seconds or so. I mean, what can do that? And stop. <laughs> and so that was the second one I saw. And, it, and as I said, we were talking earlier, it was almost as if they were talking to me. And you think you're balmy. At, you know, you're crackers. <laughs> Somebody in the sky talking to me, don't be stupid. Yeah, but you have a track record to suggest. Yeah, that I, do, but I didn't have then yeah then i'm telling myself i'm crazy now when you look back you think well maybe i need to rethink that maybe there was something there now and people mm. ask you anyway you know thousands of people have said to me what did you think did you, you know and the honest answer is i don't know i can't be sure what i was thinking at the time other than generally speaking i was thinking why have i seen two <laughs> in the space of two months you know, that's unusual. I've never seen one before, and I've only seen a few since. Wait, so you said this was August 31st, 1971. <clears throat> 1971, right? yeah. And you did a bunch of stuff with the IRA. When was Bloody Sunday? That was in 1972, right? I think Bloody Sunday was 72, but I wasn't doing anything with them then. That was before. Oh, in 1972, I wasn't doing anything really with anything to do with terrorism. Let's I was doing it, but it wasn't there. Well, I've got the newspaper cut in. 
but the one i've got here hasn't got the date it says mummy mummy don't let the spacemen get us <laughs> uh, why can't i see the other part of that story it's got the date on it but it was it was definitely in the last end of august just randomly googled there's two things on this list let me uh -huh. see if there's anything else an inquiry into allegations of brutality by the security forces against those interned without trial in northern ireland is announced All right well i've that's, always been I've, that's I've, weird I've, right that's weird right is, yeah i mean i've always been somebody who is deeply concerned with justice mm -hmm. you either did something or you didn't and i have got myself into trouble and had battles fighting for people that were set up by the police or mm -hmm. set up by corrupt institutions and organizations i'm famous for that i can send you a whole load of stuff that's that. a good thing to be famous for you're on the yeah. right side oh, of yeah i'm famous for that because i don't like you know if you did it you did it fine you know mm -hmm. you got to deal with it but for what it's worth given your work in that area it is probably not a coincidence that there was some event tied to that that happened on that no day. no you know you're probably right yeah you're probably right there'll there probably a whole load of things we could look at especially uh, since know. that i mean that was literally my immediate intuition that had something yeah. to do with that and yeah. that's with like literally there's two things the other thing on that list it probably means nothing is adrian bemis runs female world record marathon no i don't know yeah yeah i don't think it means anything but those are the only two things that showed up in the i mean the, I, re I, I remember i remember the oma bombing and well I, I can't remember chronologically which was first now canary wharf bombing mm -hmm. i had done a drawing and i had spoken to two london intelligence officers that would deal with this who i knew i knew and i said that there is a truck bomb and it's somewhere in that area and it's going to blow up tomorrow i said i'm prepared to come up there and look for it but i'm not doing it on my own i want even if it's just an ordinary police constable to be with me I am not walking around Canary Wharf with bomb notes on my own. I said, and anyway, if we do find it, I'm going to need somebody that can radio in and call the troops. Yeah. And an EOD squad yeah, or whatever. Yeah, right. yeah. Anybody, even just a regular uniform plod with me, I wanted to find this bomb. And that was declined. I said, well, Sodjo, I'll go to the dentist instead. <laughs> so I didn't cancel my dentist appointment. Yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's perfectly fine to, for you to risk your neck, yeah, right? Yeah, but we're not yeah. going to risk a if police officer. Right? If you can't send somebody with me, but I described the whole thing to them. Uh, and I got a phone call the following morning. And if he ever watches this, he knows who he is from an intel officer that I'd worked with for a long time. And he said to me, Christopher, I'm just looking at the day, the first, this is, he used the word first, the first daylight photographs of the incident. He said, it's exactly what you described to us. I said, so why didn't you send somebody with me? He said, I was overruled. Mm -hmm. He was overruled to do it. Why do you think he was overruled? They didn't want to risk life and limb, they want they it to or did they want they it to happen yeah they wanted it to happen so that they could build yeah did they want it to happen the london underground bombings me and tom drake discussed that bush was here at the time i was monitoring really was there any danger to your president but in the process of that i find myself in the london underground in the middle of bombs and carnage and I sent Tom the notes to America. So I faxed them off to him. Well, email, not fax exactly, but uh, email attached to him the notes. And we spoke on the phone and he said, have you spoken to anyone in London? 
He said, because we can pass it through as well. I said, I was told, and this is what I was told, that the chief of London police would rather see London destroyed than have to believe I can do this. That's why? That's why. I don't know how much we could have saved. What I do know is the four terrorists took the train from the station just down the road from my house that morning to get into London. Yeah, it's just a superstitious, like, and that's I not even superstitious. It's like, see London destroyed than to have to admit you can do this. Well, he did live by his words. I mean, obviously, London wasn't destroyed, but people died no. because he was so yeah, stubborn. Lots of people. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, again, my phone would have been monitored all the time, all the way through this. And my mm -hmm. wife's friend was coming over from Germany that day. And I said, take the green line bus, not the tube. Because she said, I'm going to get the train into London and then the overground railway out to where we live, because we live 35 miles north of London. And on the phone, I made her promise she would take the Green Line bus from the airport to this airport and I'll pick you up at this airport. Because there's, a, there's an airport connecting bus. It's called yeah. Green. I said, get that bus and I'll pick you up at the airport here. I said, but do not get on the tube into London. Now, I know that that conversation was overheard because people have said that they heard the intercept. Well, you didn't tell her why. You just gave her. Oh, yeah. I told her why. Oh, yeah. Oh, I told her why. You know what she did? She got on the bloody tube and got stuck in it for five hours. I bet you she never did that again. You're, I mean, no, she she's said, lucky she didn't. She was. Well, if, if she'd have been on the train in front, she'd have been on the one that blew up. One of the ones that blew up. She yeah. was on, she would have been on the district circle line. Now, wow. now listen to this. The Sunday before this, there was a film crew with me from Discovery Channel. And they were filming some stuff with me. And I said to this, because they said, when's the next bombing? So I told them, I said, we're waiting for some stuff in the London Underground. And he said, blimey, he said, I'm not going to go on. He said, I'm going to stick to the bus. Now, I didn't know about a bus going to be blown up as well. But he phoned me when it happened. And do you know what he said? He said, I am looking out my window now and I can see the bus that blew up from his window. I said, yeah, well, I didn't know about the bus. My mind was merely restricted to the underground but apparently that person was supposed to get on the underground but he got on a bus instead so the bus was in accidental in that sense yeah well you can't predict everything right no 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 i just saw the underground ones but could we have done anything you see we had a very good system to facilitate and improve the information if i am or i visit the scene of an event immediately the event takes place you start seeing more of that event before it happens that's why we did arizona the way we did because if you're actually at the place mm -hmm. whether it's a crime or not you see more of it in advance and that's why I suggested when we did the experiment that you take me to locations. But it's no good just describing the location. They wanted to show their intelligence. So at, at, at any given location, there will be lots of common things. There will be lots of things the same. Oh, wow. You mustn't see those. It has to be the defining characteristics of that location so you've got to see something and write down something and say something that is not at any of the others and we did it day after day for 10 days and you 100 percent yeah that's what they reckon they, they're scoring yeah i i mean astounding and did you know what the best day was when i was at a telescope in an astronomical observatory 
and I'd been in the dream out there in the universe being looked at by the telescope. So I'm looking back at it, and that's the target. So they've taken me out. Actually, that particular night, we went around the whole solar system, right around the perimeter of past Pluto, around. It's just incredible. It's like really being there. It's like, I don't know what this virtual reality is like, but it's like that. I woke up in the morning and I thought, wow. I've just been around the solar system. Did you get a sense that you were physically there or your consciousness? It felt, was like, there? It felt like you're really there. Okay. But you can't say uh, if it was physical or not. No. It just felt no. Very real to you. Yeah. I mean, the only time the, there's a crossover is when you have a dream operation. And when you wake up, there's triangular marks on your arm with, with holes where they drilled into you. The marks are really there. Your heart's better. And you were up there in a dream. So was I really there? My wife says she doesn't think I left the bed. Mm -hmm. She said, I think you were here all night. But the marks were on my arm in the morning, these three puncture marks. I yeah, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we understand. We still don't really understand don't, the true yeah, nature of reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah we right? don't. Like, physical, non-physical. Like, there's I, a I crossover. Think, there's yeah. a crossover. I say it like this. What we call awake, what we call today alive, awake, I mean, last night in my dream, I was with so many different people. None of it made any sense. But at that time, I would have said I was real. I was there with them. We were doing stuff, you know, talking about yeah. stuff. Random question for you. Is mm. that a dream catcher behind you? It is. Does it have any significance? <clears throat> Only that I like them. And I've got another great big, huge one. You can't really see it. That's okay. That's okay. I'm just curious as to... Yeah. There's another one on the window in front of me. A big one with an American eagle on it and an Indian chief. Native American chief one. It's a big one. Any, any, any significance or providence behind that? How, how uh, you came to own it? <sighs> this one was given to me. And that one I bought in West Virginia in 2002. It just because they're to do with dreams, really. I don't know whether they change anything or whether it helps or not helps. I don't sleep in here, so, you know, my bed isn't in here. West Virginia 2002, that sounds like an NSA visit, but I'll just leave it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was something like that. Yeah, sorry. I, I have a tendency to do that. I make draw conclusions very quickly. Okay, so 9-11. So you're in Arizona. You nail this contest. How do you get that message across to the U.S. intelligence community? Well, the chap that phoned me before the buildings fell, when after 9-11 they were hit, and before they fell to the ground, I said to him, aren't you aware of me just coming back from your country trying to warn you of this? And I said, you know, and, and the experiments I did. And his words exactly were, I was appraised of the experiments daily. I said, why did you send me home? You weren't, you know, I'm not very good with American names. Well, it was kind of hard to believe. <laughs> well, do you know what regional accent he had? It wasn't that one I've just said. That's I a weird question, I know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> difficult for me. I can tell British accents a little bit. Like, I can tell if someone's oh, from no, like, North England, I can tell they're from North England. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Scotland and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can. I can't do the same thing with the US. I think I could tell a New York accent. Oh, yeah, know, everybody like, can. New York, yeah, New York. Yeah. Yeah, 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 by the way they say things. Um, and then Boston, you probably can too. I'm going in the car and have a yard, right? That kind of. Yeah, I probably couldn't. I wouldn't know that. It was just a very well spoken, non specific, but obviously American. Midwestern. Midwestern yeah, accent. Maybe something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've heard Chris Mellon speak in person and on television. That kind yeah, of. He, yeah, yeah, it's a standard, kind of nondescript. Yeah, yeah kind of nondescript. But yeah, so yeah, I mean that's another thing that interests me. You know, 
and I met with Chris Mellon and we talked about all the experiments and things like that. Yeah. How did you meet him? T t like, I had no idea about this connection. So this is, you know, interesting. I was, so when 9-11 happened, people came to see me from places that I'd never heard of. And I was asked to come over to the States and I was introduced to a whole bunch of people over the period of a month and chris mellon was one of them i i remember him more than anything because he's now on tv all the time to do with the ufos but I, I if you notice it's kind of interesting he focuses only on the nuts and bolts aspects yeah. have you noticed that yeah, well i mean what he said about my experiments to me he, this is what he said what you did in, and we're talking about arizona is light years ahead of anything we've done i can tell you that Mm -hmm. that's what he said it's light years ahead of anything we didn't even imagine something like this was possible but what i'm doing is not just remote viewing is it it's a whole different thing to that yeah this is proper intelligent communication with something outside out there but he watched all the videos of the arizona experiments and he was with the group of people when they said <laughs> Don't be silly. We know more about you than you do. <laughs> yeah, silly me. But no, I met a lot of people, very high up people. I mean, crazy people that you would never imagine you would ever meet. And, you know, sometimes I try and find out what some of them are doing now. They're not easy to find. A lot of this was 22 years ago. A lot of them probably retired and gone. But I, I, some of them are still in touch with me from time to time. Yeah, a lot of them disappear, right? Because the nature of yeah, their, yeah, yeah, a lot just, of the nature of their job yeah. is very dangerous. So yeah, they came out that they're a retired CIA guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a few I tried to do a Google search on the other day. They don't seem to be really anywhere anymore. But it doesn't matter, you know. It doesn't matter. But um, Chris Mellon really interests me because he knows my. I know he knows my story because mm -hmm. we talked about it and i know that he accepted and through or because of those meetings i met other people and did all these crazy things with tom drake and other people speaking of chris mellon we talked about this a little bit in private but we don't think we ever reached a conclusion what do you think how do you think this is going to shake out in terms of disclosure I think is forgive me, Mr. Mellon, if I'm wrong, but I'm going to say what I think, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I think he was somebody in a position to pretty much know everything. I believe that when I did those Arizona experiments, nobody had ever done anything like it before. Mm -hmm. I believe that he believes that this is nothing that chris robinson does there is an intelligence right. there's an intelligence out there and he desperately wants to know what it's all about i absolutely believe that he's finding it really hard to get any serious investigation into it i believe that and from watching his tv programs that's what he's trying to do He's trying to get people to listen that there is something out there that we are not taking notice of. Mm -hmm. And whether it's friendly or not, we ought to know. Now, from some of the messages I've had, that one about the world is doomed, ab initio, you know. <laughs> The way it's going, it is. Mm -hmm. Well, the I think you're seeing. I think you're seeing all this stuff in parallel. You're seeing the destruction of confidence in large institutions and corruption, and it's almost like, I mean, it's almost cartoonish. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. But I think at the same time, you're also seeing the beginnings or the midst of. We're in the midst of, at least in the United States, a third great awakening. Like there's a, you have the first and second great awakening historically, which were religious 
movements. And I'm not suggesting this is a religious movement, but I think it's a spiritual yeah, awakening in, in some yeah. sense, however you want to define it. You know, we're not alone, a second Copernican revolution, whatever it is. And I think the forces of reaction are just pushing back against change. So I think people like you are meant to tell your stories to people like me who have very limited, if any, experience with this sort of stuff in a way that uh, the problem is, is people who believe believe so strongly that they're unwilling to accept other possibilities for whatever narratives running in your head, right? So the ET, nuts and bolts ET people, the cryptid people, right? Bigfoot, this and that. The spiritualists, you know, ghosts, but if you say UFOs, they look at you like you're crazy. I think it's all somehow related. I have no idea how it's related, but the evidence seems to suggest that. I don't pretend to know what any of this stuff is. For all I know, we could be living in a simulation. It's just a simulation making things interesting for us. It could also be that there are angels and demons. It could be that there are extraterrestrials. It could be time travelers. It could be all of the above. I don't know. But what I do know is there are phenomena that happen that are undeniable. So mm. the things that you've been able to do in your life are verified, backed up by data and evidence, and would be impossible to happen by chance. And then the other thing is you also have diehard skeptics who refuse to engage with the data that's staring them in the face. Mm. So I think we're at that moment in history where things are meant to look absurd so that we all, I mean, even COVID that forced everyone to spend a year, at least a year in yeah. isolated yeah. at uh -huh. home. And also like, look, I used to, I probably lost several years of my life, literally see, sitting in a car going from home to work. Mm. And I will never do that again. Right. I am creating a life that allows me to be productive and earn a living without wasting time. But what that is, is there's a lot of people who are questioning kind of the old system and the old ways. And there are people who are pushing back. And that's what we're in the middle of. Mm. And I think understanding that there is a non physical component to reality. And again, to your point, it might not be that there's physical at all. Right. It's no, just. It yeah. And I think that we're on the cusp of learning what these things are, and there are people who are pushing back against it. Not necessarily because they know what the answer is, but just because they're afraid. They're scared. So, for what it's worth, that's where I stand. Yeah, I mean, I've been talking to these, whatever they are, dead people or otherwise, nightly for 35 years. Nightly. And what do they, what, what do they tell you? What do they tell you? Oh, what do they, well, the first things they couldn't, they told me they couldn't understand what religion was. And I spent a long time trying to explain to them what religion was and why religion developed. And my take on that, and what I said to them, and, and I always put it honestly, this is what I believe. I believe religion was developed from a desire to explain the unexplainable at mm -hmm. that time and yeah, it, it was science before science yeah, yeah and it was hijacked every time by some smart ass who thought he could make money out of it <laughs> or, or thought he could control people power, or could control yeah. people and they've always said to me that the only thing that will save us is knowing the truth yeah and i percent to them show up you know, for God's sake, do it. And they say that is not going to work right now. We've got to get a critical mass of people to accept us before we can do that. But they do show up. I mean, these things get seen. I mean, not every UFO is an alien spacecraft. It's just unidentified. Right. And I have seen with my son, a massive black triangle. It flew over where we were on holiday one night, nine in 2015. Was it slow, slow moving? It was slow. Yeah, that's I mean, us. This, that's probably this, us. Right. Yeah. This thing was so slow. 
and yeah. it just glided. But it was the size of two football fields. But it was yeah, where, I mean, where we were. We were on holiday by it, a lake. It could be and, like a for all we for all you know, it's a dirigible. It's like a you know, it's a rigid airframe. Yeah, reconnaissance. But it was yeah. it was black and slow. I mean, and it just went, and we just looked up and thought, "What is that? It's enormous." But then other people have said they've seen them go fast. Well, you know, I mean, we, even if they go we, fast, unless they're moving at right angles at you know a hundred thousand miles per second, yeah. Well, right? it's probably us. Right. Yeah, these. Yeah, it could be. It, it was something from here, but but, but it was huge it, this was a massive black triangle and it just went down over the lake towards the city of milton Keynes, and hundreds of people must have seen it but it was just whoa what is that but i don't think i've been in an alien ship that was a triangle but if we go back to the grand master and there is such a entity and they are concerned for what we're doing to this planet Mm -hmm. are they concerned about it because of the, what we're doing to the planet or are to they concerned other. about yeah yeah to each other are they concerned about us common sense tells me that they won't be concerned about us right it'd be concerned about the planet they'd be concerned but, about the planet but it sounds like it, it's not that it sounds like it's us yeah yeah which is strange but, well not if we are them and they are us Yeah, it could be us in the far future, right? Yeah, yeah. Or even after death, who knows? Yeah, right? after who knows? Yeah. I mean, Lucy, who was a girlfriend of mine from very many years this ago. Is, this is the Irish. This is the, the Irish, Irish girlfriend. Yeah. Let's That'd go there because I'm I'm interested in this yeah. too. And then yeah. and then I think uh, we'll talk about this, and then I'll uh, let you get back to your life. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> I can right. talk to you for yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah well, we <laughs> we might do that more. I've talked to Jeff and other people for hours. Um, yeah. I, I, I think it's important. And, you know, I'm 73 next birthday. You, the only thing I can do now is, is tell my story to as many people as I can in the hope that it helps somebody. Yeah. You know, it's fine. That's what I can do. Lucy came to me. Well, I, this is, I'll tell you the story. So my daughter, Danielle, is expecting a baby. And it was due on the 11th of July. 2021 that's a sunday saturday evening my daughter danielle called me she said dad nothing's happened this baby isn't going to come out tomorrow so your dream is wrong and i said my dream says your little girl my granddaughter is going to be born on sunday morning she said well nothing's happened so i said i'll leave it to me now, I did this lightheartedly. I did it as a joke. I walked from my front door to the street. I looked up in the sky and I said, come on, guys. What are you doing? Get that baby out of there. I turned around. This has God strike me dead if this is not accurate. I turned around and I walked to my front door and there was like a gunshot. And a little tiny micrometeorite came crashing into the planet straight through the rear screen of my car parked on the parking space in front of my house. And that was caught on my CCTV. My wow. daughter phoned me back. Dad, what have you done? <laughs> have you done? This all happened within four minutes. Yeah. He said, my waters have just exploded. I'm going to be off to the hospital. I said, I told you. <laughs> now, but somewhere I've got this little tiny black, like a meteorite, and I've got the CCTV. It's, it's not very good because my CCTV records to the internet and it all gets out of order. But you can see the screen shatter and you can hear the bang. It was the bang it coming through the sound barrier and i don't know it sounded like a gunshot but it's a tiny little black meteorite 
landed on the parcel shelf in the back of the car. Have you had have you had the chemical composition of that thing analyzed? No, I've I've got it somewhere. I haven't I haven't even bothered to worry about it. It's just a little funny story in my life. But but wow. All right, so you're that's Irish crazy. So girlfriend. so 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 <clears throat> my granddaughter's two or three days old. Lucy comes to me in the dream and she hands me her body and she said at least she was loved the short time she was with you and i woke up crying in tears and i phoned my daughter she goes she doesn't live here she lives somewhere else i said what's wrong with the baby she said oh she said we noticed this morning this funny little red mark coming up in where where a bottom is where a nappy is I said, mm, well, keep an eye on it and let me know. She said, why? Have you had a dream? I said, no, not really. I'm not telling her that. She knows the story. She knows that now, but I wasn't going to say it that early. So anyway, this thing got worse and got bigger, started to bleed. Bloody COVID. Can't see a doctor. Got to send a picture. So I went to the doctors. I said, my granddaughter was bleeding. Yeah, but we're not seeing patients because of COVID. And I'm thinking, no, this is not right. So I phoned the hospital. Can't take her to the hospital because of COVID. I'm thinking, I said, but this, she's a little baby and she's bleeding. Anyway, I got really annoyed. And I shouted and was quite abusive to this pediatrician at the hospital and she said well what do you want me to do about it i said at least you could can well have a look she said we're not seeing patients i said it's a hospital and she's a baby and she's bleeding oh we'll bring her in then but you can't come only your daughter so i took her down managed to get through the security she took her up she looked at it she said, I've never seen anything like this in my life. I don't know what that is. She phoned a London specialist hospital. Now, this was, I think, a Friday. We were there the Monday morning. She's got a hemangioma, which is like a tumour, which was spreading inside her. But they didn't think it was a malignant tumour. And there is a treatment for it. So don't worry, it's not cancer. Mm, I'm not convinced. So December, I think, 2021, when she was three months, four months old, she had an MRI. There's a lipoma on the spine, and there's this stuff that's growing inside her, which has got all around her bladder. And But there's medicine that we're giving her to reduce that. And my daughter said, can this become cancer? And the doctor said, no, it doesn't do that don't worry about that it isn't that and i'm thinking well if this isn't life-threatening something is so we watched it and watched it and watched it she kept taking the medicine and it didn't really change she's now two now our may spring bank holiday she had an mri routine one beginning of april and we hadn't heard anything back from the hospital but this looked different and I woke up from a dream and Lucy said, you've got to take a picture of it and send it to the London hospital. She said, and that will be enough to prompt them to do what they need to do. So Danielle said to me, all right, Dad, well, she's got an app on the phone. She can send pictures straight to the hospital. She, says she takes a picture of, and the dermatologist we're under, we're not under oncology or anything like that. We've got a spine issue that they're not worried about until she's eight or nine. They might need to operate. None of it handing me the dead baby. And that's where I'm at. Her only being with us for a short time. So she sent the picture. She sent the picture on a Friday morning. About midnight, she gets a message back on the app on the phone. We've got to bring Maya to the hospital Monday morning for a, an ultrasound. So we go up to there and an ultrasound. And what happened was this. The picture didn't show anything 
to the dermatologist that she wasn't expecting to see. But it prompted her to try and find the results of the MRI, which hadn't been looked at by the spine doctor who ordered them because he's not in a hurry. This is a long-term thing. Yeah. And she sees this tumour the size of an orange inside this two-year-old. And now we're in there with oncology. Well, she had a fourth chemotherapy session this time last week. Her AFP level was 91,000, which is... What's, a, what's AFP mean? It's a protein that the tumour excretes, the malignant tumour excretes, that they can measure in the blood. A normal AFP level is two or three. It was 91,000, which I've read up on what I can. That's worrying. But after four sessions of chemo, my granddaughter's AFP level is now 20 this week. We've got another MRI scheduled for the 12th of September and a meeting on the 23rd where they will have looked at that MRI and their team would have decided the next steps hopefully the dreams have caused me to do enough on time that she stays with us but without the dreams she wouldn't be here right now she wouldn't be here right now so thank you lucy when did lucy start appearing to you and helping the night you she died which what year was that? She died in 1996 on the 30th of July. I was with her. I was with her because my grandmother had told me in dreams for the last year exactly what was going to be happening. And if she didn't get treatment for this and have that and that, she was just waiting to die. I went to see the doctor with Lucy. I explained who I was. She said, but we've just done a CT scan. It's clear. I said, well, then let's do another one. She said, you don't need to. I said, I'll pay for it. I'll pay for it. Let's do another one. She said, there's no need to. She, Mrs. Rispin, you're okay. It's clear. They'd already taken the lung out and, you know, got rid of the malignancy in the lung. But my grandmother told me a year before, so before she even knew she was ill, what day and what time she would die. Did you share that with Lucy? I did in towards the end when she knew that these were secondaries and it was coming to the end. One of the last things she said to me was, I'm not much used to you anymore, am I, darling? I said, Lucy, your use to me is only just beginning. She said, well, if there's somewhere there and I can help you, I will. You couldn't believe the help she's given me for different things. Now, is she just in my imagination because I want her to be the one helping me? Yeah, who and knows? I, we don't know. We actually don't really know anything, do we? No. <laughs> we have we no don't idea. really know. Yeah. We can record and chronologically state, identify we can look back and say, that was that day, that was that day, the way we calculate days. But if, what, if time really we, exists, right? Does time really exist? But it comes back to what really, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I say it over and over to myself. Why couldn't he tell, why did he, why did he have to give me a clue to McKendrick and Adams, but he can give me his full name? Was it because I'm talking to him and he's not allowed to give me their names? He can only give me a clue because it's not them speaking? Oh, I've, I've thought of... A mi uh, uh, I, like he can only give you consent for his identity, but yeah, not can, the yeah, others. Can, yeah, or maybe there's different rules that yeah, are stranger yeah. than... He's not allowed to tell me, but I can give you a clue. Their father built the runway. So many things. There's so many things. And I've lived it every day for 35 years. And do you still do any work for any of these folks? I've still got connections and people contact me from all over the world telling me what does this dream mean and what does that. And I try and help everybody the way I can. 
if this is something that people can learn to do themselves? Uh, I was asked in your country more than here, could I show people? And that's basically what I did for seven or eight years after 9-11 was show people how I do it, how I translate the dream. How, but there's no guarantee the codes are going to be the same for somebody right. else. Well, it's your subconscious. Like you're, is, yeah. you're having a it conversation is. with your subconscious. And make sure that I, I, I was asked to help make sure other people understood at least what I understand. So there is massive interest in this in very tiny places. I mean, and Bob Bigelow's thing, he doesn't say very much on his website, but he did an essay competition that Jeff won. And this year he's doing something different, but the website's still the same. I, I was out of time to apply for it, but he's got, he issues funding for things and I didn't know anything about it until it was too late. But it'll be interesting to see what he's doing because he briefly says that he's looking for evidence. Probably, people can go to his website, but he's looking for evidence that is substantiatable. Uh, I, I forget the words he uses, but basically what he wants to do is blindly get from groups of people answers to questions. And if 10 people that don't know each other come up with the same thing, you, you can start to believe it. I do. You know, yeah. I, once I've dreamt of something three times, I'm getting on the, yeah, this is going to go down. Fortunately, I have only dreamt of my granddaughter's death once. And I've taken all sorts of steps because of those dreams. So have I done enough? Have we done enough to prevent it? Hopefully, because she's a gorgeous little girl. Well, just but, yeah. love, her, love her every yeah. day that you can. Every, yeah, we do. Yeah, You're doing always, everything you can. We're right? doing everything we can. But we're doing more than we could have done if I hadn't had mm -hmm. the dreams. She'd already be gone. The doctors don't really believe in this. You know, what made you send the picture? Because it's, and then I've tried to explain to them. My daughter gets upset when I explain to the doctors who I am and what I do. She thinks I'm, they're going to think I'm crackers and they won't look after her daughter. <laughs> I, I've but gotten to the point, like, I don't, like, uh, that's nonsense. You don't care what other people, just don't care what yeah, other people think. Yeah. If, if that's your, if that's, that's the actually, reality, that's the yeah, reality. Actually, actually, the head oncologist at the hospital said she's going to get my book. And I said, well, if you send me an email address, I'll send you a PDF of it. Premonition Man, you can download from Amazon. Yeah. That's there if anyone wants to read that. All right, Christopher. I don't want to yep. take up your entire day, but oh, I'm good. I, I told you earlier, I don't care. I'm only going to go in and get into bed. My it was an absolute pleasure. We, we need to do this again, though, because I'm yeah, I mean, you're, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can fond for stories. So. We can talk whenever you want. But there is 35 years of stories. So you'd be talking, you know, never mind until I'm dead, until you're dead. <laughs> no, well, I, I'll, I'll definitely be reaching out to you. Yeah. But I like to space these, right? Because you can't, yeah. you can't well, push sure. money in the same No, you've got to you got to do things in the right time and use the bits of it that you think your audience are interested in. But most of my stuff I've told you, at least some of it, the important bits are verifiable. You know, the documentaries and the experiments I've done there online, people can watch them, people can make up their own mind, whether they think it's a success or not a success. I'm really open book with things now. I don't really see the need not to tell things that, I wouldn't have said before doesn't matter anymore all right my friend well thank okay. you very much and i look yeah, forward to you. talking with you again all right bye-bye bye-bye if you enjoyed this video please click on like subscribe and the notification button so that you're alerted anytime i post something new